like to call the meeting of the trustees to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance. To the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. And to the Republic, to the Republic for, which for which it stands, one nation, one nation uh, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Now the Secretary, please call the roll. President Schultz. Present. Secretary Treasurer, I'm sorry, Secretary Treasurer Horowitz. Here. Trustee Warner. Yeah. Trustee Pell. Present. Trustee Welker. Here. We have a quorum present this afternoon. Okay, very good. Next trustee meeting work session is September 30th, 2020 at 3 p.m. And the next regular meeting is October 5th, 2020 at 1 p.m. The first item on the uh, on the agenda is the discussion of 65 Cliff Drive observations of the trustees uh, to present to the public and to the, uh, to inform the rest of the board. So uh, James is going to bring up some videos that I took and I believe some maybe some photos that Scott took also. Scott was down there. So 65 Cliff Drive. Can you bring that up, James? Is James on there? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, just give me a minute here. Oh, okay. okay. No problem. So I went down to Cliff Drive about two weeks ago at dead low tide. And uh, Scott, when did you go down there? Uh, it was last Monday. Oh, okay. About you put one of, one of, let's start with one of the pictures. Uh, is it is it showing or no? It's showing, Video? but it's small. It's a... Uh, uh, like snapshot. Click on one of the pictures. Oh, there me? Hang on. Oh, not you. <laughs> okay. Let's get in front. I don't have any pictures up, just uh, the faces of everybody. James has it. Yeah, just hold on one second. Here. No problem. It doesn't let me pick on the... Um... Either one, anyone, just uh, you can do anyone you want to start off with. Unless you want to start with the videos first. That's trying to just get it up. Okay. Hold on. All right. Can you see it? Yes. Yep. Yes. All right, just give me a video. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is looking, do you see the, uh, the cutout there? And that is looking north. east, well, northeast there. Okay, so you can see what it looks like. There's the channel right there. It's about six inches deep. Tide was still running out. Okay, why don't you do that over again? So that's starting from the, the east, west side. There's some rubble there. But you can see that there's a scarf line there from the tidal action. I don't believe that from, from where I looked, it looked like that, that the erosion from down the cliff was, was contributing to it. It uh, was pretty clearly defined that it was the tidal action that was causing the, the uh, additional sand to slough down uh, into, the, into the opening of the canal. Eric, so, uh, this yeah. is... Eric, with this debris as it's shown right next to the water, is that where the exact uh, footprint of the old bulkhead was? Uh, no, no, that's out a little bit further. Yeah, James has got another one that it goes from the other direction to be able to see a little bit better. Well, it looks like, and you know, reviewing the old, uh, the old photos, aerial photos of the site, because this has been, the sand has been accumulating there for a number of years. And, uh, the newer sand that is lighter and cleaner is uh, like kind of like a frosting on the cake of the of some of the older sediments that you can tell by the uh, the bottom characteristics such as algae, the color of the stones that that that's uh, that that is an older deposit. On some of the areas there, but there's definitely a tidal cutout now, and some of the sand has uh, come out into the channel. So James, you got the other ones, any of the other ones up? Yeah, it's just giving that. Okay. So 
so I went there at low tide. Uh, Scott was there at high tide, right? It was. Falling. I was there at high tide, but I stayed there and and I observed the tide go out, and I was there uh, pretty far into the process of uh, outgoing tide. And then I walked down there on the flat, and I was able to actually see uh, firsthand what he's talking about, where you do have like a 12, 13 inch gap down mm -hmm. um, being eroded. Uh, you do have a low sill type bulkhead there with a the thriving wetland behind it also, right, yeah. right adjacent to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, uh, there's uh, good wetland vegetation on, on both sides of the property. Okay, now this is sweeping the other way. This is looking east and swinging around. You can see how narrow the, the channel is right there now. It's flowing. It's the other side, the other side of the creek. So I just wanted to photograph the, the, which way the channel uh, was coming out. Okay. And you'll be able to see as it's coming up, there's a series of boulders and rocks and a very healthy wetland. Uh, on that side. Eric, um, that wetlands that you're showing us here, yeah. that goes all the way probably about a thousand feet to the narrows. Right. You know, it, it's in front of all the bulkheads. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very, that what you see there is consistent to the shoreline. Um, yep. Where the bulkhead was, there was no wetlands behind it and there was no wetlands in front of it. So when sh the bulkhead was removed, it's just, it's just sand and, uh, a little right. bit of cobble there. Right, right. So you can see with this photo right here that, uh, and it sh it'll show in another photograph that at the upper uh, part of the photograph, it looks like very clean sand. That's that's the sand it, uh, that appears that has come from the from the shoreline and worked its way down into the over the top of the existing sediments that's in the canal. Yes, so, uh, James, I think you have a. A picture of there of, of that uh, the bulkhead to the uh, east. Just a, a, a single picture. Yeah, let me. Uh, that shows down the creek. Okay, just hang on. Fortunately, they're turned. No. Okay. Not that one. It's another one. That's the scarp line. You can see that it is a, uh, if you, on the left-hand side, that there's a uh, pretty good vegetation. There you go. There you go. That's a, that's an excellent. So you don't, so you don't have any erosional runoff coming down from the hill. Otherwise, it would show gullies. That's, that's strictly tidal action. You can see the uh, debris right up against the scarp line. Yeah, there you go. Okay. That's right at the edge of the property looking east. And that's the uh, sand, some of the sand that's covered over the existing uh, shoals that are there uh, on going up to the, the bulkhead. As you can see that that bulkhead is leaking a little bit too. And there's a quite a significant amount of good vegetation behind it. So, and that, this picture is looking from the edge of the grass uh, down, and you can see way down the hill is where this uh, particular disturbance is. So it's a good, at least 70 to 75 to 80 feet east about uh, walking from that area, at least 80 feet down to where the edge of the creek is. Okay. So that give very, gives everybody a lay of the land. And uh, so uh, I believe that we're going to have to uh, talk about this in executive session since there is another town agency involved and how we're going to go about remediating this uh, situation and how, uh, what directions we're gonna have to give the landowner as to uh, get back to some, some shape. Anybody else have any comments on it? Not at this point. Okay. All right. So uh, the purpose of this was to show the rest of the board uh, pictures at high and low tide. We had two trustees go down there, and uh, so we can uh, 
you know, uh, keep everybody up to speed and, and let the public know that we're moving forward on this. And uh, we'll talk to the town attorneys uh, in executive session about how we're going to address the uh, notice of violation. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Good. All right. All right, so uh, that's all we're gonna pretty much discuss uh, today on this issue, but we're, we're moving forward on it. Uh, if any of the public wants to call us up, uh, personally, uh, we, can, we can discuss it with them. Uh, first on, item on the agenda is public hearing of uh, Stephen Malcolmson at 72 Far Pond Road, Shinnecock Hills, New York. Uh, I'm gonna make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, Mr. I see Mr. Malcolmson on there. Do you have anybody else uh, representing you, or are you just uh, by yourself? Uh, I think Jim Walker uh, is probably on in listen mode. He was he was planning on being on, so I, I assume he is. Okay. Charles is uh, Mr. Walker on. I see a Jim J, but not a Jim Walker. Yeah, well, I think it might be James J. Walker. <laughs> okay. See if we can get him on. Coming now. Okay. Trying to get him to start his video. Okay. There he is. No, that's not Jim Walker. Okay. Okay. And proceed. Okay. I guess Mr. Malcolmson's uh, in favor of it, right? I guess you're going to have to uh, talk it through a little bit. We can't get a hold of uh, Jim Walker unless he's going to come on a little bit. Okay. Well, Eric, yeah. Eric, can I start off that? Yeah, I, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I met with uh, Jim Walker last week uh, with, and Mr. Malcolmson uh, also joined us to look at the uh, situation after we had put the sand there. Uh, that stayed for a better part of two months uh, in front of the road and in Mr. Malcolmson's property. Okay, uh, bye. Excuse me, I need to interrupt for one moment. I have Jim Walker just called me on my cell phone. He would like to be brought into the meeting. He said it's under InterScience, not James J. Okay. So if, if Charles could bring InterScience into the meeting, Steve, uh, Jim coming Walker now. just called me. They're coming now. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm just, you know, you know uh, looking at a similar situation on uh, Little Neck Road and the property very similar to Mr. Malcolmson's, mm -hmm. um, try to maybe mirror what was, had went on there that had, that had been pretty successful. So I met with Jim at that site and we had met at Mr. Malcolmson's property at Far Pond. So we've kind of uh, changed the uh, preliminary plans or the plans that we're going to be looking at to... Uh, more uh, suit uh, what we need in this area. So if Jim is on, maybe he can uh, give us a little overview. Okay. Okay, uh, can you hear me, Ed? Yes. Okay. Uh, I met Ed down at uh, Little Neck Road. Uh, Little Neck Road project has been in place for a while. And it's a, a low uh, rock wall with sand behind it. And the nice thing about it is it stabilized the shoreline, but it also built up an inter intertidal marsh in front of it. And it built up a, a beach grass uh, ecosystem behind it. So it has two positive aspects as well as holding the uh, shoreline. And then we went down to uh, Steve Malkinson's property and we have since revised the plans. And basically the idea is to bring the uh, uh, low rock wall around uh, and have a, 
cobble apron so that the uh, Department of Public Works uh, dredging vehicles can still access the areas they need to and recreate the uh, sand beach uh, right behind the uh, the low rock wall. So that that is uh, uh, the, the project that's been uh, arrived at. Uh, we do have a New York State DEC permit and Mr. Melkinson uh, would need to go back to see the DEC and get them to uh, amend the uh, permit that was issued. But the idea is uh, this project could proceed right away and uh, you would start the process of getting beach grass to grow in the intertidal marsh to uh, uh, establish in front of the rocks uh, as soon as possible. That's it. Well, my concerns is about what about the beach? I mean, you're gonna plant intertidal marsh there, you know, uh, uh, what's what about the access to the beach? The access to the beach is going to stay the same. Um, in other but words, uh, instead of having a, a, a drop off that's sharp, we're going to have sand. Uh, and the sand will be uh, gradual. And it'll, it'll stop the water from reaching Far Pond Road and ending up in that low area behind uh, the end of Far Pond Road. But the, the beach grass on Little Neck Road grew by itself. Uh, intertidal marsh is the easiest uh, tidal wetlands vegetation to establish. And I don't think we have to uh, uh, put much effort into getting spartina oil mm -hmm. or to grow. Um, the more important part would be to, to stabilize the sand by planting beach grass. Um, and eventually, if the beach grass is established, uh, Steve Malkinson should uh, plant uh, Northern Bay Barry along his uh, bluff and keep that area as stable as possible as well. Yeah, get rid of the larger uh, trees that are there uh, that are easily knocked over by storms and root systems washed out and put smaller like shrubbery bushes that will allow it to uh, stabilize, right? Right, uh, Jim? Yeah, uh, Bay Barry has been used uh, over by Ted Hepp's property I think the property owner was Damon Giglio. He doesn't live in Southampton. It's like a rental property where he was, he was uh, going to move there, but he stayed in Florida. I think the story is he's taking care of his elderly mother. But in any case, uh, he has a shoreline that was under attack during Irene and under attack during uh, Sandy. And we put sand there. Um, and then he planted it to beach grass. But the, the, the best part about it is getting uh, Northern Bayberry to uh, grow in the higher areas. And that makes a, a complete uh, root system to stabilize the, uh, the steeper areas of the property. Um, that's, that's the idea. Uh, intertidal marsh is not, uh, is not something that you, typically need to plant. What you need is a stable shoreline mm -hmm. and the seeds from the uh, Spartina ultimiflora wash up on the shoreline along with the eelgrass uh, remnants and whatnot. And that, that intertidal marsh we would expect to grow on its own. It's, al it's already growing. It's yeah, there's already several uh, yes. little meadows of it uh, out in the bay. Once you stabilize that um, beach and it has quite a bit of cobble and underneath it there's quite a bit of old uh, meadow bog so that the beach grass will grow pretty easily there. When we put the project at Little Neck there was very little um, you know uh, beach grass in the water there but subsequently once that project was done it was stabilized in front of it uh, the beach grass has really flourished there. Um, it's probably quadrupled in size and uh, which is uh, a good thing because that really cuts down on the wave energy that hits these uh, beaches during a, a high tide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we talked about that. Um, I was approached uh, that the highway department and the uh, CPF, uh, the property was bought uh, alongside Bar Pond Road by CPF and there might be some concerns that they have about construction on town land. 
Which know, piece of property is that, please? The property to the on west, the west far pond road where that big cedar tree is there that's falling in is bought with CPF money. So uh, you know, far pond road shooting straight out. I mean, um, has to. I think that that's going to have to be discussed internally as far as uh, does how far the town road. Uh, property goes out now. Has it become trustee since it's bottom land? Uh, they lost it. You know, we're going to get into this uh, discussion quite a bit. We're going to, we have it coming well, up on another issue today also. Well, it's my belief that the Shinnecock Beach Road runs all along this whole, uh, you know, beach all the way from, uh, okay. you know, Fort Pond all the way to Crab Road. A good and point. It's a 50 foot wide right of way. And we have given uh, other property owners permission to put bulkheads and other structures on that Shinnecock Beach Road with a caveat that if the public ever wants it to be, you know, taken back over, it has to be removed at the owner's cost. So this won't be the first project that will be placed on the Shinnecock Beach Road in order to stabilize a, uh, a residence. Yep, good point. Of it. Good Land point, of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. No problem. Yep. Well, we had discussed something like this. I don't I think as big as this, but we've discussed putting some boulders in as sort of a wave break. Just as long as the, uh, the beach is still, uh, you know, accessible and, uh, Well, I, you know. I believe this is a project that we're going to have to take, um, uh, in, uh, sections. You're going to do a section one year and revisit it for next year. It's not something that will maybe 100% work. It might be uh, necessary for this project to be tweaked in some fashion next year or the year after because uh, there there is a lot of wave energy there. It is right next to a dug man-made dug uh, channel which does have you know currents and uh, you know that's another consideration to take into you know, thought is because these currents, as as we ask the county to move the channel west further, they might be somewhat lessened, and then the property will stabilize much easier. Mm -hmm. And and if if I could just say a word, uh, my my impression is yes that that this is, you know, again, uh, you know, perhaps step one in the implementation of what is hoped would be a, again, more comprehensive idea where some of the beach actually would be restored on a more permanent basis, you know, in front of, of, of that rock protection. Again, if, that, if, if it's effective, if the county is willing to migrate the, uh, the channel uh, east and we can move some sand that we, that- West, you know, west. We, west. We want yeah. to move I'm sorry, Matt, I'm west. sorry, west. Right, and right. move some of that excess sand, which is currently between Far Prawn and Middle Pond, over to reestablish that beach, as as we did, as the trustees did this summer. That you know yeah. that that that's the long term plan to 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 actually enhance uh, a beach there with public access. But in the meantime, you know, it's a step at a time. Right. So I, I uh, so Ed, if you wanna you wanna. Uh, let the public know a little bit about what's going to happen with uh, the dredging projects that are going to go on and the move, well, movement of sand. Well, I, I specifically had several conversations with the county dredging uh, Scott Hillary and uh, the dredge uh, part of it. And we asked that the channel be put as far west in this situation as possible. The further west you move it, it that would be where historically the channel was originally dredged and it will uh, lessen the erosion on the east side of the channel. Um, dredging in Middle Pond is also going to happen this year, and it's going to be put on the same deposition site between Mr. Malcolmson's property and Middle Pond. I'm hoping to move the material a little further west, close to Mr. Malcolmson's property with the new dredge in order to have some natural beach renourishment happen through the dredging project. Mm -hmm. um, we have a very large stockpile of sand uh, between Far and Middle Pond that we can use to bolster the road and uh, 
and beach in front of a far pond. So that's not a problem. We do have plenty of material there to uh, access. And actually it's been building up and it has probably a hundred fold build up that spit from where it was in the sixties and seventies. Um, James uh, Dure had a, a time lapse of that area going back for the last like 60 years. And 60 years ago, there was a very thin, narrow spit there with a little bit of uh, grass. Now it's a, become a very, it's a very large peninsula. And there are also three houses that were built next to the town property where the deposition site is. James, do you have that uh, time-lapse uh, film available to show the public uh, on how the beach has grown in that area? What year would you want to go to? Uh, probably back to the 60s. 60s to current. No. It's pretty telling of where the sand has gone and how it has changed the whole mm -hmm. dynamics of the area. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at now is current, right, James? Yes, yeah, current to 1962. Yeah, you can really see that the channel in front of uh, Far Pond was considerably west further. Um, and then the spit that was in Middle Pond was, was much smaller. And as the channel has grown and worked its way west, uh, east at uh, Far Pond, it has caused the easterly uh, property to erode. What I'd like to see over time is to push that channel back to the west and then to refill that area between Mr. Malkinson's property, Far Pond Road, and the property that was bought by the town. Right. So that, that's where we want to uh, try to head towards. Yep. And we do have the history here showing, of, showing how it was, so we could try to recreate that. And I, right. my understanding right. is this, the DEC has allowed uh, material to pl be placed below the spring mean high water in a couple dredging projects. Yes. So this would be an excellent uh, scenario for that to take place. Mm -hmm. We just need to have a conversation yep. with them and to uh, explain what we're trying to do here. Well, we have a conversation com coming up with them, uh, I believe, at the next, uh, if uh, James is, uh, uh, if they get back to James on it at the next meeting. So at that point, then we can talk to them about having some uh, larger meetings uh, on a number of issues in the town. So uh, I'd like Jim Walker to give an overview of the new proposed project, the scope of it, and how it's going to... Uh, protect Mr. Malcolmson's property, protect the, the town trustee property, and also try to protect the end of Far Park Road and bolster the beach up. Jim, could you give us a little overview? Sure. Um, summarize it. The, the first and foremost part of the uh, project is we're putting a rock uh, shoreline at the high water mark. So the high water mark is where the seaward uh, part of uh, uh, Shinnecock Beach Road starts and it goes 50 feet up. So we're putting the rocks right at the bottom yeah. of the uh, road right away. And it's, it's intuitive anyway, because there's some uh, intertidal marsh grass growing there that we, we wouldn't want to impact. And it makes for a, a nice place to locate the uh, seaward toe of the rocks. And above the seaward toe of the rocks, um, we're putting sand. It would be ideal if the sand was from the dredging projects because that's the best sand to stabilize a, a shoreline of this kind. Um, mm -hmm. It's two layers of rock. The, the first layer of rock is dug into the beach um, and we put filter fabric and we put uh, cobble below it. The cobble is natural stone it, it uh, makes the project look better, uh, especially when uh, we get southwest lilies and the, the rocks are exposed. The cobble is going to look pleasant. Um, the bigger rocks will protect the toe of the restored area and the sand above it will uh, help uh, Steve Malkinson's uh, eroded shoreline 
uh, stabilize and let it let it get planted to northern um, Bay Berry up in the higher areas close to the property line where the sanitary system is in danger of becoming exposed. So that, that's the basic idea with the project. We put it at mean high water and we follow the natural contours of the, of the, the bay at this location. Um, putting the sand up to Far Pond Road will also help prevent the water from washing over the road, eroding the road and, and putting salt water up into the low area north of the end of Far Pond Road. Third part of the project is we have rock cobble um, at the uh, uh, western end of the rock shoreline and that is to allow Suffolk County DPW uh, to continue to use um, rubber tired vehicles to get out and do the dredging project. Um, and then we just simply tail the sand off to the, uh, to the old um, cedar shoreline that, that's always been there. And that's to uh, help out um, protect everything else, but it would also be amenable or uh, useful if the town continues to put sand there. Um, it will help build up that old uh, spit of land the way it always was. And I, I believe that's most of it. Um, during extreme storm events, we suddenly lose sand uh, behind the, the rocks because they're very low lying. This is not a rock revetment in any way, shape, or form. It's a rock shoreline. And when and if the sand erodes in these type of uh, uh, shoreline restoration projects, the sand simply gets replaced replanted the beach grass and everybody can live with the uh, downside of huge storm events where the, the, the tidal surge is 10 or 12 feet above normal. Um, that's, that's the idea with this shoreline. We see it uh, at the end of Little Neck Road, but moreover, we also have been using it on the north side uh, out of trustees jurisdiction for erosion that's been happening more and more often on Peconic Bay. Um, okay. So it, these are things that we have seen used in the past 10 or 15 years. Uh, we used to use this type of shoreline in uh, other areas like Georgia. Uh, at, at the times uh, where we originally proposed these things, they were called Adirondack shorelines. And it's layers of rock. You try to get the intertidal marsh to grow below. You try to get uh, bluff vegetation above. And sooner or later, um, everybody's happy. The thing gets stable and the vegetation grows in real thick and it protects uh, the upland property and it makes a nice transition into the bay. Okay. What's the size of the rocks that you're proposing? Um, they're, they're about two foot. <clears throat> Similar to the ones that are at uh, Little Neck. Okay. So well, yeah, they're, they're identical. Uh, and there's a there's a place in western uh, uh, western part of the bay uh, by Crab Road. Uh, it was a natural outcropping of rocks. Some were added by some of the homeowners, and it is a you know uh, very similar project to what we are do, trying to do here. But it's more of a natural project, and the grass has grown very well there, and it has become a stabilized shoreline for almost. Well, almost 400 feet of shoreline. So that's a good example west of this area that a very similar, uh, you know, application has been used and been successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about it when we went down there on a, on a site inspection. I would think that maybe we should uh, uh, ask Rob Young to weigh in on this too, you know, to uh, concur uh, yeah. or have I any mean, other suggestions. And the point is, is that they're only two foot rocks and they uh, if things uh, did not work out exactly like we liked, we, they could be moved very easily or, or reconfigured in another pattern. Right. Well, there, are, there are two other areas, Lenape Road and uh, South Beach Road, that have mm -hmm. glacial rocky outcroppings, uh, very similar to this. It's all natural and uh, the grass has grown very well in those two areas. So there are three areas uh, to the west that two are natural and one was manipulated by man, but they're very successful and they, they've stabilized the beach very well in these areas. So if anybody wants in the public wants to take a look at an area 
that we're trying to recreate, those are the three areas that come to my mind uh, most readily. It's basically a it's basically a living shoreline, or the um, the description of it now, right, Ed? Yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a Shinnecock Bay living shoreline. The, the, there are two, there are three areas in Shinnecock Bay that have you know evolved, and I can, I'm going to say over the last 50 years, because 50 years ago there was very little, if any, uh, grasses along Shinnecock Hills, but there are several areas now that are are have you know, a hundred foot stretches or better uh, of the uh, Spartina. And then Far Pond did have some and it's trying to recreate itself. And that would be in front of the last project that we allowed similar to this one. Okay. So, I mean, I think it's, I think it's uh, having Rob Young give us a little overview from his expertise would help us also to uh, steer us in a direction moving forward. But I, I think it's something that, you know, uh, something that would work for almost everybody. You're not going to get a perfect project for it works for everybody. But I think uh, in a year or so, once this project is established, I think we're going to fall back on it as a learning experience and okay. hopefully a positive one. Yeah, we're going to have to be flexible in this area. You know, I mean, it's uh, a lot of a lot of factors hitting it. Yes. Um, the living the living shoreline that was established along the reservation, along the Shinnecock Reservation, has been extremely successful. And it's been there now five, six years, about? Yeah, well, it's three, so, three years ago, they did the dredging of the East Cut and put all of that material there above the, you know, the <clears throat> rocks. And uh, I, I think it's it stabilized that whole entire beach. Uh, especially in front of the graveyard site where they had all the uh, cement, you know, rubble and stuff like that. That's all covered up and it's pretty much been, uh, you know, vanished as far as having sand and grass and plantings. So I think it's a huge, you know, living shoreline project in Shinnecock Bay, similar conditions to what we're looking at here. Okay. Do you have any comments from the uh, public? Does anybody want to uh, voice their opinions on this? that we have? Charles, if you let him in. Uh. One sec. Is there any uh, comments from the public, possibly? Does anybody wish to speak on this? Uh, there are no hands, there's a lot of people, but all you have to do is raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'd like to, I mean, I, I think we should definitely keep the public hearing open. I think we should submit these new revised plans to Alex Gregor, the superintendent of highway to, for him to, uh, you know, weigh in on. I think that's really important. So uh, when we're done with this meeting today, I'd like to have them electronically sent to Alex's office so that he could look at them also. Okay. Sure. I think that's and, really important. Uh, and CPF since it goes across a little bit of their property too. Correct. You yes. know, projected lines out. Yep. And Rob, Lisa Conrad. And Dr. Sorry. And Go Dr. Ahead. Robert Young as well. Yes. 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 Okay. Anybody weighing in? Charles, yeah. No hands. Okay. Uh, uh, this is Steve Malkinson. I, I, I would just like, I, I appreciate the uh, cooperation of the trustees. I, I would ask that, uh, and certainly uh, this, I have, you know, my objective is not to curtail any public discussion or public comments or anything of that nature, but, but time is, you know, as I think you all know, I've been at this now for three and a half years. Time is not my friend. And this winter is going to be very problematic. So anything I can do to encourage the expedite the expedition of the process, not to not not to you know try to um, in any way uh, you know curtail anyone's participation, but 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 you know time time is a negative, and and uh, you know. Right. So anything we can do to move forward on a timely basis would be really appreciated. Okay, well, I think that, uh, you know, we have to have these other people weigh in 
in the next week or two. And then there might be maybe some, if there are, are any revisions, it, we just have to discuss them in public, you know. So, uh, and, and Ed, have you talked to uh, Suffolk County dredging? Do you have any idea of what, when they want to do the job? And when it, it, is it, is it uh, better to do this rock wall first or after they deposit all the, the fill? Um, I, after the meeting, I will have a, have a phone call into Suffolk County DPW. Um, they are in the Peconics right now trying to get their, you know, the September dredging window finalized on a few projects. And then they're going to go for the regular dredging window in October. So I will update the board as soon as I get, uh, you know, a more uh, solid time when they're going to do the dredging here. Okay. 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 And maybe you better forward this plan to them to see if it's going to interfere with their operations. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah, I think those yeah. are the four, four entities that should have uh, the plans to look at. Okay. Right. Want to do it the right way once, right? <laughs> I, I, yes. This way we can get it expedited quicker too. Okay. All right. Okay. okay so uh, you're going to make the motion to, uh, you know, extend the public hearing to the next uh, meeting. The yeah. Fifth. Lisa, what's the next meeting so that we could, uh, The next you know, meeting will be Monday, October 5 at 1 p.m. And it will also be via Zoom. Okay, okay. so I make, make a motion to extend the uh, public hearing until that meeting, the, the fifth you said, uh, yes. at one o'clock. And at that time, hopefully we'll have uh, answers to the four other entities that we're looking uh, to uh, chime in on this, okay? Yep, so sounds good. Got yeah, okay. my second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. We appreciate your patience, Mr. Malkinson. Thank yeah, you. We want to do it right the first time, right? Look yes. forward to continuing okay. to work through this. All yes. right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> public hearing number two. I'd like to open the public hearing to accept the donation of 141 feet of bulkhead reconstruction or repair services of the trustee owned portion of the bulkhead immediately adjacent to the homeowner owned bulkhead at two Peconic Crescent LLC, Shinnecock Hills. Make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry, who was the second? Ann? Scott. Sure. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> All of us. Okay. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, just for the record, I did review the affidavit of posting and the notice of public hearing, and the board does have jurisdiction. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody here to speak in favor of this or against? We're obviously in favor. Give it a minute or two. Okay, this is. I, uh, I do have a hand. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Oh, I'm back. Wow. <laughs> Okay, Gina. I have it on two computers. Sorry. Right. That's why. Can you turn one off? Yeah. Turn one off. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Not leaving. Hold on. Please. Hold on. This mute one. Okay, I'm here. Sorry. Okay, and you are uh, the agent for this project, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So you're. Um, I also have um, there as representatives of the owner also on listening right now. Okay. So if you need to communicate, Kelly, if you need to communicate anything particularly to them um, about paperwork um, that might be coming that needs to be signed, please feel free to do so. Okay. Okay. So you want to just uh, give us an overview of the project, Gina? Uh, the um, owner's portion of the bulkhead, um, as you know, was previously owned by Dominic Greccia. Um, we had had a um, permit to do, redo that bulkhead and then a small section of the town uh, bulkhead as well up to a certain point. I think it was 37 feet. Um, that bulkhead uh, permit had expired. We reapplied um, and we reapplied to just do the owner's bulkhead which was granted and that work was completed. Um, and then I requested to modify, actually put in a new application uh, just to represent the town po portion of owned bulkhead um, to be paid for and reconstructed by the owner 
that is a two Peconic Crescent LLC in efforts to um, protect his property as well. It was in his best interest uh, to do so. Okay. What is the uh, length of the bulkhead that's uh, proposed uh, over the town section? 144 feet. All right, so he's going to donate 144 foot of brand new bulkheading Correct. to the town. Okay. Correct. Okay, so we just have to, uh, you know, run it by through the uh, uh, attorney's I, I, office I, to see that everything is uh, okay. I, I'd like to give a little overview, Eric, of the area. It is okay, go ahead. One. It's another area uh, that's uh, Peconic Beach Road, our jurisdiction. Um, it is on a navigable channel that's reg regularly dredged. There's a tremendous amount of current and tide that runs back and forth in front of this bulkhead. And without this property being shored up, the trustees will eventually have to replace the bulkhead and pay for it out of our pocket, which will be a, a, a very large cost burden. I think it was, uh, is a great public service so that they're contributing this bulkhead to the trustees and that we'll have a new bulkhead there for people to access to go down on the beach and sit there go fishing kayaking it's a it's a very well utilized uh you know uh, spot for people in the town to go fishing and you know uh you know sunbathing it's it's a sandy nice sandy beach it's got parking it's it's a wonderful area so having yep. this bulkhead shirt up would be uh, good for us and good for the yep. everybody in the town. Very generous gesture. Yes. Yep. I, There's a I, lot I of agree. positives. Yep. Very hey, popular I, spot. Beautiful spot. One of my favorite. Yes. Hey, nice nice want, beach in front. And there will, be, there, there will be no restriction of the public in any way and that will be in writing as part of this, right? Well, the public will always have access off of the uh, road, but we have access steps on the halfway down here. Now you can actually see them right by the cursor. We will right. replace them and that would be, that's our 75 foot right away. There's, they have no claim to it. And right. we're gonna make sure right. that when we have all the documents signed. Right. Yeah, you very easily could walk right into that area. There's nothing restricting it right now. It's just like a sand area yep. presently and it will continue to be so. Yep. Okay. Now I can make a motion that we close the public hearing and uh, leave it open for comment for uh, uh, what, how many, what's? Two weeks. Two weeks or well, so. Until the next meeting. And then until we can the next meeting. If, if we have okay, so, we um, feel so. Seven. Two week written comment period, Eric? Yes. Second. Okay, all in favor? No. All right. Aye. 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 So Thank carried. you. Yeah. Thank you, Gina, for working on this. Thank you very much for being on board to make it all safe for everyone. Yeah. Great. Okay, bye. <clears throat> all right. Okay, the third public hearing is on the amendment of the blue book, A340, section 6. B beach regulations and four by four driving calendar year term. Uh, 61 B six calendar year term and 62 B for addition of a nominal fee for transfer of permits to new vehicles. Uh, here, I'm going to make the motion we open that. Second. Back. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, Bill, this is yours, right? You want to discuss yeah. that about the four wheel drive? Basically, basically how it would work is that you have option to buy a four wheel drive and a ramp permit for three years. Um, if you choose not to, you could buy it for one year. Um, but you can only buy the three year one every three years. Um, that helped to relieve the, some of the staffing issues in the, in the um, office and also make it more convenient for the people if you buy a new vehicle you can um it'd be a feed for a new sticker you bring your old sticker in off the, off the old vehicle and then we'll issue a new sticker mm -hmm. okay i think it's a really good program it's going to streamline the office and make less paperwork so i mean anything that we could do to make the office run more efficiently and the public in light of COVID and the ability for them to come in and get permits and stuff like that, 
it's going to make uh, our office more easily accessible to them. I think it's a good idea. Right. Bill. We have that in place for the, the uh, moorings already where we have three uh, permits. And uh, it was discussed this morning with uh, Scott and I and the town controller that he, uh, he brought the subject up too. So. Has it, yeah, been dis has it been discussed with the staff in the office? Have, has their put input been asked for? I, no, I think it would be appropriate at this point in time for the staff in the office to uh, provide their input. Yeah. Uh, I do think it, I think, do think it needs to, um, we needs to be discussed as far as the creation of all training for the counter staff, um, the cost of the stickers, uh, the co different colors. I, I do think all of these details need to be discussed with the office staff. Okay, that's, that's fair. We could uh, put that together and have a conversation. I think that the intent is to uh, stagger, stagger these, um, you know, these permit applications so that we get a consistent, manageable workflow for the office as opposed to these uh, gigantic surges that overwhelm the office that create a lot of stress and a lot of issues. So any input that you have that will help us achieve that would be very helpful. Okay. Well, so I think that they would definitely need to have staggered um, expiration dates because otherwise you're just going to create another problem. Right. That's that they why all expire saying, at the same time. Well, yeah, right. was like, yeah right. we so, discussed that this morning with the correct. controller too about uh, a certain amount would be uh, issued three years and certain to, uh, you know, right. and new people okay. that come in, they're going to be. Well, the material is. The, uh, the sticker material is very expensive. Um, so you're talking about purchasing two different kinds, a one-year permit and a three-year permit. And the uh, cartridges and uh, the printers themselves are all very expensive. Uh, so we really need to talk about it in terms of implementing the govern module, the, uh, translating that to the counter staff. Uh, there's a lot of, as we all know, the devil is in the details. Yeah, so, sure. um, I do think it bears noting that the staff needs to be included in this conversation. Yes, and, well, the, Bay, and the Bay constables also, because they're going to enforce it. The, the, the staff certainly is appropriate for them to um, opine at this point in time. And in the earlier meetings, you know, with the comptroller, I mean, the town is obviously going to have to take a direction of adopting fee schedules that are commensurate with what uh, the expenses are that they're facing. And the trustees are no different than that. So I think that uh, in the interest of keeping our ship in the channel, I think that this board's going to have to, you know, get our heads together and, and roll up our sleeves and figure out what it is that we have to do to meet all the obligations that we have to all the freeholders of this town. Uh, so any of the input that you have will be helpful and we'll all work together and take it into consideration to be successful on this endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, do you want to put this, uh, you want to hold this off until uh, in the 5th so we get the additional information from the De staff? Definitely. I would second okay. that motion to hold okay. it off to the 5th. Gives us a couple weeks to, uh, you know, answer some questions. Is that okay with everybody? Sounds good. That's yeah. fine with me. Okay. Eric, you made the motion. Was I'll make seconded? a motion. Yes. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, consideration. Appreciate it. The fourth public hearing is to, uh, on an amendment of the blue book, A340, section 64, public access, in order to add a subsection C to allow for implementation of trustee owned kayak, canoe, and stand up paddle board storage racks and guidelines for storage permits. Make a motion that we open the public hearing. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 So carried. <clears throat> okay, Bill. Basically, this is let us in certain places what the property owned by the trustees to put the kayak racks up or <clears throat> they can hold kayaks and stand up boards to rent the spaces out to the freeholders where they can store their paddles when they're not using them. Um, East Hampton does it, the Parks Department, Odie does it, um, other villages do it. Um, I think it's be, be something very good for the freeholders to um, 
easy access to the same water body that you like to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we can we can move them around if we find out one space does not work. We can move it to another space. Um, what is owned by the trustees? Okay, so Ed's been working on this too, uh, and uh, Ann, I believe too, has all been having discussions with East Hampton, who has a pretty successful program already. Uh, yes. How did they uh, work out the details of, uh, you know, identifying which kayaks go on? Do they have a sticker or something? They have a sticker for them. Oh, okay. You need to have a sticker. You know, one yeah. thing is uh, we, when we start to implement this, it, it's good because if you have stickers, then you know whose kayak goes where. And if someone finds a kayak out in the bay and whether the person fell in, they can call and see, you know, the uh, bay constables if they have to do search and rescue. Because over the last couple of years, uh, being on the ocean fishing, the Coast Guard has numerous calls in at night of kayaks out in the water, people missing. So it, it's really gonna make it accountable for us and the Bay Constables. So if one of these kayaks are missing or someone's missing to hopefully locate them quicker and easier too. I think it's the a Coast Guard, uh, The Coast Guard gives out a free sticker already too, which you could put on, a, put on your board. Yeah. I think um, our constables have supplied those stickers as well. Yeah. Okay. Am I so we can probably and use one of those to modify it somehow, yeah. like we used to do on the old on the old four-wheel drive permits with an indelible marker or something like that. Instead of going yes. through ordering and more stickers and everything and running it through the computer and everything, we can work if, that out. My, and then when I people come ask, in, for these... you... hold on. Yeah, Lisa. I'm sorry. I just might, if, are, are you planning on charging a fee for these kayak rack, the use of the kayak racks? Yes. Yes. Like East Hampton does. So this will also entail the development of a new govern module, a fee Not necessarily. Schedule, you could have a ledger book. Supplies. You could have a you could have a ledger book or something like that. It doesn't that all have to be. Eric, everything goes through the govern program. Everything has to be entered through govern. Uh, so it's not going to work with a ledger book. It has to all be consistent with all of the other permits. Right. So we'll so we'll take the next couple of weeks to also research uh, while we're working okay. on the permit issue that you brought up for the other. Uh, hearing. At the same time, we'll also inquire about a, a, a template or module that's needed to accommodate, you know, this as well. Um, yep. That's a good point. We'll yep. work on it too. Well, it's the first start of the process. We have to uh, put it out before the public and see what their comments are to uh, allow us to do it in the first place. Sure. Okay. I think it would, it's going to be very favorable because a lot of people don't like uh, trucking a 20 foot or a 15 foot, uh, you know, a kayak on top of their little BMWs. It's if something, or their small cars like a Subaru. If it's something they can take at one time, put it at Fort Pond for the season and utilize that kayak ramp uh, launch and next year another one so they can move around, I think it would work out very well for the public and yeah. further well, the public access throughout the ponds and bays and harbors of the town. I think it's a positive for everybody. No, so also to relieve some of these kayaks are left on the, in the marshes tied to a tree at some of the road endings. Uh -huh. um, so that will clean that area up too. Yes. Yep. Right. Once, again, once again, I think that the office staff needs to be consulted for their input on this. I think though it will help that East Hampton town trustees have been doing this for between three and five years. So they have a successful program that they've already instituted and it's been a revenue generator for them, which I hope it can be for us. When um, Ed Werner and I both discussed this with the East Hampton trustees throughout the fall, throughout the winter, late winter and spring, um, their response was very favorable to it. And I think if we start with one rack and pilot prop do a pilot project that that might be a way to yeah. ease into this so it's right. not too overwhelming for anyone concerned right well Scott, I, I think you're probably gonna need more than one rack to, to do a pilot uh, project because you're gonna have to see which areas um, 
you know, people are going to want to do this. So I would suggest, you know, not a how tremendous... About a big, but how would, about a Baycrest, Scott? Don't you have something well, going Bay, on Baycrest, Baycrest already has a designated uh, kayak ramp that's already built there. Um, so that would be one. But I think there should be a few of them. That way you see what area of the town, you know, gets the most, you, you know, uh, enthusiastic right. about this. And then like Bill was suggesting, if there are some that are, that are not, uh, you know, being sought after, then we could take it and move it. The Parks Department has an excellent template uh, for these that we could, you know, our maintenance department could easily copy um, and maybe tweak. Yeah. And then we could, we could move them around with our vehicles. But I would yeah. do a few of them, you know, strategically throughout the town and see where, you know, people are excited about that. And we could perhaps on our website promote it a little bit. But I, I don't see this as something that, uh, is going to overwhelm office staff. I mean, obviously, there's going to have to be creation of templates and, and forms and procedures. But well, since we're doing it already, it, since recreation's doing it already, it's probably you know I'm sure that uh, IT has created it for them. You just shift it over. Yeah, yeah. this is the first course. This is the first thing we do is we have a public hearing for it, and then we start discussing <laughs> it internally. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I do uh, think we should follow suit as we did with the prior public hearing yeah. and uh, have a chance to sit down with the staff, IT, uh, the yeah. cost of the stickers. Uh, you know, um, if we could uh, have an opportunity to do that, I would be grateful. Yes, of course. That's fine. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, make a motion that we uh, extend okay. this public hearing to October 5th, our next uh, meeting, and then. Uh, go from there. I'll make I a Have a second? I got it. You got it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The next public hearing is an amendment to the Blue Book <laughs> Section A340, Section 36 moorings in order to add a subsection B to allow for the implementation of permitting process for dinghy permits to correspond with the mooring permits. So, Bill. Okay, <clears throat> we get a lot of complaints from the from people and also from the Bay Company where people who have moorings leave the dinghies up in the wetlands in the grass area, tied to a tree or just anchored there um, with no identification on them. So we don't know who they are, who they belong to. This would, um, this would hopefully solve some of that problem by if you have a mooring for a small fee, $25, you could have a dinghy on the beach um, stored there. Um, if you don't have a, if you don't have that, and there's no identification, then the other um, thing is could be confiscated um, by the bay constables. It's like house cleaning almost. If you want a good example of an area that we're uh, trying to, uh, you know, discuss, Red Creek Pond is a prime example. There are multiple boats, dinghies, and little vessels that have been left there for. I'm mean, say up to 10 years uh, haven't been used. They've been, they're chained to trees with chains oh, okay. and locks that are rusted. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of unsightly. And if you get a storm like Sandy, a lot of this debris just washes into the bay and, you know, gets stuck into the wetlands and meadows. So I think it's December 1st, all of these dinghies and uh, kayaks should be taken out and, you know, put away and any that are left there put in the impound yard, uh, because it, it cleans up the areas and it makes them look, uh, you know, more presentable to the public. Right. Yeah, like Conscious, you have, have that at Conscious Point too. There's several areas, like Ed says, ha all have the same problem. This wouldn't have, this would have negligible impact on the staff because the people would have to put their own numbers on the dinghies, uh, you know, corresponding with their mooring permit and uh, no stickers or anything but that would have to be issued. Uh, with just uh, yeah. changing yeah. the blue book would say, uh, I, and on the uh, application, uh, you know, I, I don't know whether you, you'd have to charge, but you, you know, it would go with the, the uh, mooring maybe. Well, if you charge for a mooring, it should come, you should be able to get a dinghy, you know, permit or a dinghy, whatever, to put your dinghy on the beach. You already pay once for the mooring. So if you're going to be us using a dinghy to uh, tend back and forth to your boat, just make sure it has a proper identification on it. That's, that's my thing. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll take a look at that. Okay. 
because the trustees are going to have to have a whole other conversation relative to fees and fee schedules. Yeah, because they don't uh, want to so have 75 at that point, stickers going on, you know. Yeah. Okay. And, and also, um, we, we would have to send letters out to the permit holders already, um, say that it's going to, let's say they're, let's say they're going to be grandfathered in. No, they, any, like in Cold Springs, I mean, like in uh, uh, Red Creek, anybody that has a uh, mooring in there should be sent a letter advising them December 1st, the town's maintenance department's going to go down there and clean up the area and to advise them to take their dinghy home for the winter and then uh, put it back in next year with the numbers and the proper identification. Yeah. I want to, I think we should start with a clean. I have a, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you these these programs you're going to implement in 2021. These are not going to be implemented immediately. No, 2021. No, 21. Next year. Yeah. If we Next do. Next year. It. Okay. If we do. Yes. It. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So same motion as above. Uh, carry to next meeting. Second. After discussion I'll with staff. It. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. So carried. Okay. Okay. So, uh, public portion. Does anybody from the public uh, want to comment on anything? Any bring up anything to the board? Is there anybody uh, in the queue? Yeah, I got some people. Okay. There's a lot of people in the waiting room. Okay. Okay, Tiffany Hi, Gavin. Tiffany. How are you? You have to unmute. I'm well, sir. Okay. How are you? Good. I appreciate you coming to the site and looking at the situation. Um, I just want to mention you did say that there was sand coming from 61 Cliff Drive, the um, the bulkhead next to the property no no it was oh, it okay. was building up in front of it yeah so this is where it tied back right and then it's like seeping out from there right so that it it all, all the sand is in fact as you had mentioned coming from 65 cliff drive so i guess the, the, the question still is, um, when we last met, you said that you were hoping to have the opportunity to speak with the homeowner to move forward and hopefully coming together with a remediation that would include containing that land in a low silt bulkhead or however you were going to have this conversation. And that would tell you what you're going to do with the violation. At that point, right. that happens. that's what's going to happen after this meeting and after we go into executive session to discuss how we're going to address the notice of violation. And then we'll contact the homeowner and let them know what our decision is. Okay, so it's okay. something that's handled behind the closed doors. I got it. Well, it's, it's, it's a, uh, a situation where there's another town agency involved and we want the right. attorneys to uh, weigh in and then, and then we'll know and then there's also a, you know, a notice of violation. So that has to be handled. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that later today. And then we're going to call the homeowner and uh, have a discussion with them about what we want them to do. Got it. Okay. Um, I did speak with the DEC with regard to this project. And they did say they would have issued a permit for the installation of a new bulkhead. So it would not have been rejected. Just mm -hmm. as a side note. Okay. It, there would have been conditions applied to it, being that the property was, there was an elevation to it. There should have been some grading of land. There should have been a lot of conditions put with that permit mm -hmm. had they received okay. it. So yep. I just wanted to give you that bit of information. And right. again, Mr. Horowitz also, thank you so much for coming to the site. I really do think seeing it in person does tell 
a very different story than the pictures. <laughs> so, right. Thank you. Right. Okay. That's all we'll for keep me, you, folks. We'll, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Brody, Mrs. Brody. Is everybody free? Mine's freezing up. My uh, meeting's yeah, freezing Yeah, it's up. happening every once up. in a while. It's happening a little bit. It's just you. Hello? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, hi. I, well, first of all, I want to thank you guys for coming down and making photographs. Um, I wish you'd spent a little more time as the tide was flowing out because um, uh, there is an island that pops up when the tide begins to flow and there's only about an inch of water uh, mm -hmm. at the mouth of it um, as you're in the bay looking north. Um, the the other thing which Tiffany mentioned is the sand. I'm on 61 Cliff Drive. The sand in front of my bulkhead is not from me. It's from 63. So I'm aware of that. I'm sorry, 65. 63, right. Yeah, you did mention that and I appreciate it. Um, the other kind of question I have is um, the, uh, with the bulkhead removed, the high tide leaves an area much higher than the bulkhead uh, location was. So is that considered public area? And does the lot size therefore get smaller? Um, that's a question that I have because if the bulkhead yeah. moved, you know, yada, yada, yada. So um, you now have, so you're saying you now have a beach there now, right? There is, there is apparently a beach there and um, maybe we can get some of those kayak racks and so on and so <laughs> forth installed and uh, have a great time for everybody. Um, then <laughs> I, I also... Uh, <coughs> I really can't comment on that right now since we're in litigation over that very issue right now. So. Okay, and you're trying to make stickers and everything. So uh, well. <laughs> if you want help with that, I'll help you. Um, right. And then... Um, I, I just want to thank Mr. Warner about the input last time we spoke uh, about what he had to say because the um, due to the prevailing wind that that channel uh, doesn't drain as well as we would like and because of the medical uh, issues could, that could result from it. Um, but mostly I wanted to tell you about the island that was there that you may not have been aware of and may affect your decisions. So I thank you gentlemen for your time. Okay, thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wants to uh, comment on anything? Charles, you have anybody else? I have no other hands. There's a okay. lot of people in there, but no other hands. Okay, very good. Then we'll go into application for permits. Okay. First item on the agenda is Trustee Resolution 2020-188, the application of uh, Doc Wosey, LLC, 315 Royal Avenue, Flanders, New York, Body Water, Reeves Bay. Uh, I need a uh, motion to um, amend, well, let's discuss it for a couple of minutes here, because there's a, there's a little bit of a difference in the, uh, the lengths uh, that were on the cover sheet as opposed to uh, what we have been discussing all along, they, they sent the wrong cover sheet and that got placed on the, on the agenda. Okay, uh, so this has been going on for quite a while. The uh, rocks were put in and um, now there's an application uh, without a permit and now there's an application to legalize those. They're all going to be uh, pulled back on, on their own property. None of it's going to be on the uh, uh, below the high tide mark, right, James? Right on this one? So, Doc Bosey? Yes. Do you have any, uh, are you prepared to put any uh, things up? Any? Uh, I, th I think so. Stuff? If you just give me a minute, I can pull it up. I don't, I don't know Let's if I have new. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have the new cover sheet uploaded, but I can pull up. Oh, that's all right. Just do the overall plan, just so we're straight on everything that we're approving down here. No problem. It's the it's the same plan as you've been reviewing this whole time, right? Um, just the uh, the cover sheet was in, incorrect that they gave us, but it, the plans were correct, right? So uh, let me just pull that up for you. 
so it's resolved that the uh, the, the resolution includes um, it is a seven by 173 foot long rock revetment along the shoreline and to place 250 cubic yards of clean sand to cover that revetment and plant it with beach grass, 12 inches on center and to re reconstruct approximately 109 feet of existing timber bulkhead using vinyl sheathing and untreated wood only for the premises. So you'll notice that they are going to rebuild that wall that goes out into the bay with the 45 degree angle jog that will hold any sand that builds up in front of the revetment. And the revetment is solely on Mr. DeVossi's pro uh, property. It's not on town bottom. And it must be um, uh, covered with sand. And um, the only other issue that has not been resolved yet and uh, our regularly assigned attorney, uh, Sean Cambridge is not with us today and Kelly Doyle's filling in. So uh, she's not really up to speed on this. Uh, the, it was the disposition of, of what happens to the beach in front of the revetments when it eventually builds up. Because if we add sand or it, uh, it is designated as a spoil site for the Doug Canal, uh, that is going to be now retained uh, by the reconstruction of this bulkhead. So we want to make sure that this is retained for public use. Now it used to be owned, well, the used to be owned by the Water's Edge Civic Association, but that has disappeared over the years uh, through erosion. It's eroded approximately uh, 200 feet back from its original uh, subdivision in 1940s. So now the, the uh, water is lapping up against Mr. DeVossi's, uh, Mr. Ketchian's property. So uh, when it builds up to ensure public access, we have to determine and get something in writing and get it locked down that this will now be either, in either trustee name or the Water's Edge Civic Association. And that has to be worked out. So any Anything uh, that we passed today would be uh, conditioned on the resolution of that. Mr. Ketchian said that he, he would like the uh, trustees to own it, uh, so it would be open to all the public. Okay. So uh, that's what we're talking about today. Anybody else have any, uh, any questions or comments on it before we pass this? This has been discussed quite a bit, public hearings and uh, has been going on since uh, last year. So I'm sure that a lot of you have uh, been down, you've all been down to the site, had a lot of numerous pictures have been taken, there's flooding on the road. And uh, anybody's input on this before we vote on it? No hands. Excuse me? I have Eric, no I do. I, I, I have one concern. The uh, seaward end of this jetty that's going to protrude out in the bay, uh -huh. is it going to have some kind of a light on it or some kind of a, a navigational aid uh, being that it's in the bay, there's quite a bit of boats coming and going there. Is it something that we should make sure that there's a, uh, it's, you know, in boating season or year round that there's some kind of a structure on it so people can uh, recognize it from a distance when you're coming and going. Yeah, probably just like anything else, right? Yep. Okay. And there's there's a lot of these at various different areas throughout the township. You know, mm -hmm. um, you could put some not, sort of uh, uh, reflect angular to reflect the device or something like yeah, that. As, as yeah. long as I mean, if it's going to be reconstructed, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that with our permit and our permission that there's something on it so that the people in the public, uh, there's a lot of people like zipping around with their jet skis. I know it's close to shore, but you know, it's just protecting you know, the homeowner and us and everybody mm -hmm. in the long run. So the lay of the land here also is on the other side of Royal Avenue. It's all bulkheaded all the way up to the other canal. And yeah. uh, Mr. Ketchian's property is the only property down there that actually isn't armored or ha has any protection against it. And it's been creeping back. We, you know, Ed and I have been dealing with this for at least uh, 10 or 15 years, watching it go back and 
various methods of erosion control have been taking place down there and, and not working. Um, so uh, I think that uh, the person has the right to protect their property. It's all back. If any of the stones will be moved back that have creeped into uh, past the high water mark will be moved back and it'll be solely on Mr. Ketchian's property. Well, I, I think it's a good project because eventually we're going to get a beach back there, Eric, yep. for the public. So All I right. think this is... Oh, okay. Yeah, good. I think it's a good project. All right. Like uh, with that, I'd like to make the motion to amend uh, the, uh, the, uh, the resolution uh, to reflect the, the uh, erroneous uh, dimensions that were uh, sent to us. So I make that motion to amend. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So now, now it's going to read uh, the new resolution will be seven by 173 instead of three by 125 uh, on that. Uh, so I make a motion to adopt the resolution as amended with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, that it will not be signed until the uh, town attorney looks at it and uh, we resolve uh, who is who is going to retain ownership of any of the uh, beach that uh, builds up. Uh, okay, conditional approval on that. Is that, Lisa, is that uh, good with you? That that language? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Perfect. All right. All right. I'll make the second. motion. Okay. Second. Uh, Scott, all yep. in favor? Aye. Roll call. Aye. Roll call vote on this one. Yeah, please. please. Roll call vote. Yes, of yes. course. Um, President Schultz? Aye. Secretary Treasurer Horowitz? Aye. Trustee Warner? Yes. Trustee Pell? Yes. Trustee Welker? No. I okay. agree in principle. Well, with an explanation, please. I agree in principle. This is an area with um, extensive fetch, and there's been a great deal of erosion over the years. Um, the property is located between two bulkheads, and it is not protected. I disagree with the process. The fact that this homeowner undertook self-help um, and placed rocks without the benefit of permits is my objection, and it's extremely concerning. Um, if this application is approved, the rights of the public to access this area are paramount. Okay. Thank you. All right. Motion carries 4 I mean, to 1. Okay. Okay, duly noted. I'm not going to make uh, any more comments on it, but uh, okay. Next one is uh, Scott, Trustee Resolution 2020 189. Yes, yeah, so I got 2189. It's a first renewal application, permit GP 000119, Tri Properties LLC, 10 uh, June Road. Village of West Hampton Beach. There's no no changes. Uh, I recommend this renewal. Second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next resolution 2020-190. David Rosenberg, 27 Meadow Lane. It's in the village of Quag. Tax map 0902-11-1-5.1. Uh, it's an application that the board has uh, worked on uh, through work session. Met all blue book regulations. Recommend its approval this time. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 2020-191 to modification for Leonard Jackson at 37 Dolphin Road. This is an application that we had prior approved. Uh, it also included a, uh, a walkway behind the bulkhead reconstruction, but Mr. Jackson no longer wants to pursue that portion of the project. So this is a modification eliminating that um, all other terms and conditions remain in effect, and it, I recommend it's, this modification be approved. Uh, one quick question, Scott. In lieu of the walkway being removed, what is he going to put there? 
just at all standard buffer language is what's going to be there. He's got buffer there. It's going to okay. remain with the compliant buffer. It's just we're eliminating a heck of a lot of walkway here. And you're just going to have appropriate blue book. Uh, he has the Tidewater docks already there with all this equipment and machinery. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that the permit was totally in synchronicity with the project that was being done. And the only way we could do that was to get this modification squared away so that everything syncs up with Blue Book regulations. Okay. So the recommendation is to approve it. One, one thing real quick. Uh, sorry, Scott. Um, he, he already has a walkway there. He's, he's leaving that there. He was going to reconstruct it to just reconstruct it, but he's just pulling it, putting the bulkhead in, and putting it back the way it was. Yeah, there's no no change. Originally, so originally he was going to recon reconstruct the entire thing. So I just want to make that clear that it's already there. He's just moving it out of the way, reconstructing the whole pen, and putting it back the way it is. Right. There's no. Yeah. no I, I think we should make sure when the bay consuls do the inspection, they know what's permitted and what should be there. That's I just want clarity on that. That's, right. He's he's been told that as well. He can't. He has no authority to reconstruct. It is what it is. Some areas are are heavily buffered with pea gravel there. Uh, again, this is Shinnecock Shores. It's a highly constrained area. So you're getting the standard language that we had with the conditions that were currently there. This bulkhead is shot. Yeah, it needs to be redone. It's going to get redone. And that's it. Okay. Yeah, he, he originally had an application on that <laughs> 200 feet of walkway, which he doesn't need. Okay, I'm good with it then. Okay. I'll give you a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Aye so carried. Ed, were you with a second? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Ed was a second? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ed's next with uh, Karen Davidson. Scott, can you read it? Because I don't have it in front of me. It's, I can't. Sure, I can't it's it resolution 2020-192. It's a recall and amend uh, for 2020-165 application of Karen Davidson, 4 C to drive Hampton Bays, tax map number 0900-269-1-43. Um, construction of a four by 80 fixed dock utilizing through flow decking and a three by 14 ramp and a six by 20 chalk float dock secured by four piles for the premises located at 4 C to drive. Uh, applicant uh, proposed to construct a four by 119 feet fixed dock utilizing through flow decking, a three by 14 ramp and a six by 20 chalk float secured by four piles of the premises. So that's uh, what you've got here. All right, thank you, Scott. So you're going from, from 165 was saying 119 and you're going to, um, I think it was four by 80. Okay, yep. so you're gonna second that, Scott? Yes, I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So Next Karen. one that Edward has, 2020-193, uh, application of MH Ocean View LLC, 30 Ocean View Drive, Shinnecock Hills, Suffolk County Tax Map 0900-271-1-41. Uh, it's construction of a four by 14 ramp down from existing low profile fixed pier catwalk to a proposed six by 20 floating dock Float to be secured by four by six by 20 rough sawn poles, but a premise is located at 30 Ocean View Drive, Shinnecock Hills. Okay. Met Blue Book conditions. Right, Eddie? Yep. Met yeah. Blue Book. So, motion to approve it. You got a second? Is that right, James? Top. It's all correct, Blue Book right? Compliant. You guys went through it on the work session. So. Yes. Yes. Right. I'm good with it. Okay. Okay. So Scott, second. It. Scott, you're seconding. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So carried. Okay. Bill Pell. Trustee Resolution 2020-194, application of Walter Cooter, 56 Cold Spring Point Road, Tuckahoe, New York, tax map. 0900-155-156, body of water is Cold Spring Pond. Um, this is to construct, reconstruct, um, replace exactly 160 foot linen feet of bulkhead 
continue project, subject pro property, construct a new four by four by five fixed platform with a handrail extended from the said bow cut leading down to a, a four by 14 ramp down to by six by 20 float um, with two, four, two by four, six pylons. Um, it's gonna be 10 feet of buffer planted by Cape American Beachgrass. Um, I think this is a good project and I'd like to have it approved. Second. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, I couldn't hear the second. Ed, was that you? Yes. Yes. Thank yep. you. Okay, so approved. Hands next. Trustee Resolution 2020-195, first modification of permit GP00116, application 188 Redwood LLC, 188 Redwood Road, Village of Sag Harbor, Suffolk County Tax Map 903-1-2-6, Body of Water, Sag Harbor Cove. Um, this first modification, um, and I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Trustee Resolution 2020-196, this is the first renewal. Um, for permit number GP000115, CF Realty Association, LLC, 10 Biddley Silly Avenue, Village of Sag Harbor, Suffolk County Tax Map, 903-2-1-42, Body of Water, Upper Sag Harbor Cove. Um, this is a first renewal for a previously thoroughly vetted application. I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Trustee Resolution 2020-197. So first renewal for permit number GP000122. This is BRYDAV LLC 19 Rosewood Court Watermill Body of Water. Set, uh, Hayground Cove off Meacox Bay, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-102-2-10. This is a first renewal also for a previously uh, vetted application. I'd like to um, suggest its renewal. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Trustee Resolution 2020-198, Application 11 Reynolds Drive, LLC, 11 Reynolds Drive, Village of West Hampton Beach, Suffolk County Tax Map 905-10-2-7.1, Body of Water, Mauritius Bay. Um, this was an application that I began work on several years ago for a living shoreline, and I'd like to recommend its approval now. Second. Second that one. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Trustee resolution 2020-199, application of Robert Fogelson, 12 Hampton Close, Village of West Hampton, Suffolk County Tax Map 905-10-7-37, Body of Water, Money Bob Bay. This also was an application, um, also a living shoreline that I began work on several years ago. I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Trustee, Trustee Resolution 2020-200, application of Joseph Carney, 9 Apposet Point Lane, West Hampton, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-382-2-30.7, Body of Water, Mauritius Bay. Um, this also is an application that I began work on um, for a new reconstruction of a bulkhead in West Hampton. I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. We got okay. Trustee Resolution 2020-201. We've got the warrant. Uh, number 16 of 2020 for $35,877.93. Uh, Lisa, I think, has a list. She can advise you what that 35000 is comprised of. Yes, sir. Automotive rentals, $1,185.78 to repair equipment for the maintenance barge. 
For Champion National Bank, $935.52 P-Card re reconciliation for the month of August of 2020. Law offices of Khan and Khan, $29,924.17 for legal fees. Call ahead, $36, portable uh, toilet rental for Marine Maintenance Building. General Code, $11.20 for Blue Book updates. Joseph R. Lombardo, $725 for legal fees for the matter of Stroud versus West Hampton Dunes. Lopers Equipment Corp, $79.97 for maintenance supplies. Otis Ford, $115.45. Service and inspection on trustees owned F550 dump truck. Ricky's Plumbing Supply and Heating um, Supplies, $371.31 for maintenance supplies. Riverhead Building Supply, Inc., $419.80 repair and supplies. Uh, Riverhead, um, I'm sorry, I just read that. Staples Contract and Commercial Office Supplies, $62.77. Uh, Suffolk County Comp Office, um, this was for the payment of property taxes. Um, that I believe is still being worked on as we speak, but in the matter of $1,717.06. Wireless, uh, Verizon wireless bill, uh, $281.16 for the cell phones. WV Mason Company for office supplies, $12.74 for a total of $35,877.93. Thank you, Lisa. Before, before we vote, just one sure. question. Um, Scott, do you know this year, um, or Lisa, um, what's been spent in total on legal budget? I can get that answer for you, Ann. I can. Yeah. You mean year to date? Year to date. Yeah, we're, all, we're over budget year to date. Mm -hmm. And in 2021, we're, we're going to be uh, spending a lot of money. Yeah. I'll get that uh, answer for you Brand, uh, from Brandy. Okay. Thank you. You want to okay. do that before we vote or you want to do that? Nope. Whenever. No. Nope. Okay. Would you like just me to curious. check? It's okay. I'm just curious. Right. Just so that we know. Okay. Lisa? Okay. Scott, Scott made yes. the motion. Yeah. Yes, Ed. When you, when you get the uh, amount, can you break it down on who, uh, who got what as far as payments? Right. Where the that'd money be, that'd be. I will. Yes. Yeah. That would be best for offer? everybody. Yeah, yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So there's a That's motion. That's a great idea, Ed. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm sorry, who was the second on the warrant? I was. Scott, uh, Ed. Okay, so we have uh, one more. So I'll do that one. You ready, Lisa? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Trustees Resolution 2020-202 is Central Purchasing and Contracts Compliance, the authorized purchase of fleet management services from Automotive Rentals Incorporated. Everybody at the speed on that one? It's a contract management service under Group 72002. I keep okay. listening to compliance with the procurement procedures when we have to get things repaired quickly. Right, right, okay. So I make a motion that we approve this. Second. Second. Second that one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody have, uh, Ed, you had something to bring up about the uh, Osprey? Yes. Um, the Eagle Scouts would like to do an Osprey nest in, in Hampton Bays. Um, I put one up a couple of years ago myself and uh, uh, a couple other people at the Parks Department uh, facility on Newtown Road. Um, it has not been utilized by any Osprey for three years. It's a brand new aluminum pole that I had worked on on it so I could put a nest on the top of it, a platform. Um, I'd like to donate that, uh, to have it taken out of there and donate that to the Eagle Scout project um, on Dune Road where they put the nest. Correct, Scott? Yeah, that would be good because we have a letter that's addressed to every single member of this board. Yeah. Um, I could fill you in. It's, uh, my name is Philip Luce. I am 17 years old and a resident of Hampton Bays and a very proud member of the Boy Scouts Troop 483. Currently working toward the rank of Eagle Scout in my troop. For my Eagle Scout project, I would like to erect an osprey nest in the wetland area. Uh, he's got Ender Road K off Dune Road in Hampton Bays. I believe that was the area that Trustee Warner had indicated on a chart, which he felt would be uh, 
an appropriate area for a successful osprey. Uh, his plan is to sink a 20 foot pole five feet down into the ground, 15 feet above the ground, build a platform approximately four square feet with two perches off the platform. Um, he's got specifications, frame and perches, two by four construction. Currently employed, we're not in school at Hampton Watercraft and Marine and have learned a great deal about using pumps and equipment to help with the installation of the pole. His boss said he can use equipment from work to help him. Um, and his family, including his uncle, who is a builder, has offered to help also, so that it's done safely and correctly. He's asking maybe, for the trustee's permission. Maybe we should let him build this because I think it's all part of the uh, Eagle Scout process. The whole yeah, process. I, I think. Yep. Yep. I think I think yes. that there's certain uh, parameters that they have to yep. go through for it to be an acceptable project. Yep. All right. Um, I told them yes, that in order to complete the uh, in order to complete the Eagle project, you have to design something, and uh, it's a show that you're you're uh, proposing a project and uh, seeing it through to its completion. Yeah, I Correct. So I, he yep. needs our blessing. So I don't know if it's a a letter of permission that he needs signed by the trustees so that he can move forward. I. I forwarded this email that found its way to me with the letter to Lisa uh, and asked um, that she distribute it to each of you to have, you know, because you are listed on here as well. Um, but obviously, you know, he's looking for an answer from us if we're going to put a blessing. No, we can on give him a letter. Board. We can give him a letter. So yes. A letter signed by all the trustees authorizing yep. the Eagle Scout uh, project. And, and I, think, I, I think during the process, Scott, maybe you should take some pictures of building it, putting it together, assembling it, uh, putting it on site and putting it up and give us a little overview of what he did and where he did it so we can put it on uh, right. CTV for everybody to I, see. I think it would right. be good that he comes in, if he can, to one of the meetings like other Eagle Scout yeah. uh, yep. candidates have done give as us well a little, address the board. Right. Right. Yep. I, I, I think, think it's, it's a great project. It, it's, a, it's a worthy accomplishment attaining Eagle Scout. Yeah. And, um, I'll, help, I'll help him out. I'm an Eagle Scout. I mean, God bless you. I mean, that's, that's hmm. great. Um, my, my hat's off to you and, and all who have achieved it, that. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of dedication. I believe it to be an honor uh, when these candidates want to involve the Board of Trustees. Um, so look forward to signing that letter with uh, each of you and getting this young man on his way. Great. Good Thank project. you, Scott. Thank Excellent. You. Okay. Um, I, I do have one other thing, Eric, about um, I did talk to Greg Rivera last week. He did go to Cold Springs Pond. He did do a survey as far as oysters and other shellfish in there because he did look in his book from last year. They did not put any scallops in there because of the, uh, you know, the parasite that was prevalent in there. Um, he said the oysters uh, grew very well, the larger oysters that we had gotten from the, some of the shellfish growers are almost of legal size. But uh, one negative thing, he did find about 100 or so dead scallops that were natural set. It looks like the parasite has gotten to them mm. in there and uh, he did not see any live uh, scallops for this year's harvest. Uh, not a very positive thing, but there's a, quite a set of uh, juvenile scallops bugs throughout the whole Peconic Bay system. So yeah. we just got to get it, them through this transition from summer to fall when this parasite is prevalent in the waters. Has there been any reports of, uh, you know, conditions out there? I mean, scallop season's coming up soon. Do you hear anything? Yes, I heard uh, from some of the baymen that it's identical to last year. The majority of the bug scallops that were prevalent in e the eastern part of the Peconics have all uh, perished. Wow. Not good. But uh, we did uh, put, we did save uh, some scallops, winter them over through Cornell, and we did put them in uh, eastern Sh Shinnecock Bay and western Shinnecock Bay uh, in August, uh, mm -hmm. well, actually in July before they set. So yeah. uh, there was some scallops put in there. And I have personally seen a few dozen scallops in Shinnecock that have survived the winter and they're still alive as, as we speak right now. So mm -hmm. the parasite is not prevalent in the, the South Shore Bays right, as of right now. Right. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, some, were, some were found last year after that, uh, after that big die off. Some were found in Mauritius too. Alive. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, all right, well, um, 
Kelly's filling in for uh, Sean, so I wanted to bring uh, something up with him about that uh, 61 Harbor Drive in, in Bay Point, the, uh, the bulkhead where, where the uh, applicant was asking us for uh, jurisdiction on it, but uh, we were going to discuss that in executive session. We can't uh, discuss that. I, I know, so we can't discuss it today because he's not here, so we'll wait until he gets back. Yes. And, I, did, uh, I did have something for executive session that I wanted to bring up. Um, is that good? Perhaps Kelly. Yeah, we can't do that right. Needs to... it, it, is that going to be a conference call? It will have Actually, to be something. It can't be on this. I mean, what, what, what schedule? No, I mean, no, no. I, what's the topic? Uh, we, can, we can discuss it with Sean next time. It's, All right, it's because, not a big well, we're, because we're going to have, a, have to have a conference call anyway on the uh, other issue about the uh, notice of violation because he's up to speed on on uh, 65 cliff drive so uh we'll give you a call we'll find out what his schedule is and uh tomorrow we'll arrange to uh have a conference conference executive session or, or okay well you, you know, have to notice any any type of executive session needs a minimum well, of 24 we'll talk to hours we'll, to no. we'll talk to him individually then and he can each he can talk to each trustee about how they feel okay. that'd be better just okay. want to move these things along. Just okay. before before we close the meeting, just two quick things. Um, at high tide yesterday, um, at Meacox Cut and at Sag Cut, both due to the high storm surf um, on the ocean, both those cuts were um, significantly washing over. So we're just going to have to keep our eye on the bay height levels in both Meacox and Sag. Mm -hmm as well as salinity levels. Um, and second thing, um, if anybody would like to accompany me, eight o'clock Thursday morning, September 24th, to the Sag Harbor Sewage Treatment Plant. Um, I'd be happy to have uh, some company. As the trustees have contributed to the Water Quality, um, Harbor Committee Water Quality Fund, um, the, there has been an invitation extended um, to one other trustee besides myself um, to tour the sewage treatment plant mm -hmm. as a result of our involvement in the water testing in Sag Harbor Village. When are we going to expect a uh, report, a final report on that? you have any idea? That I don't know. That's Dr. Gobler. So I believe they're testing through September. So I would say probably by the year's end, but I don't know. Okay. Hope, hope by year's end. The only other thing we're going to need is, uh, like I talked to you before, about Mill Pond, about yes. can, uh, you know, can, uh, contacting councilman about, about that. I have I, emailed him. Okay. Um, with the results of. Um, so to just to give a quick update, oh, the okay. carp Good. removal in Mill Pond, the carp removal is finished. Um, the floating islands are installed. There will be discussion about um, the uh, placement of them going forward. Um, there is a water quality event um, that will there that will be done in early October. A week-long fishery survey will be done early to mid-October, and a final report by year's end okay. by Princeton Hydro. So that's from Princeton Hydro. Do we know how many what carp were removed this uh, I didn't get any details because I just asked quickly. I'll get that for next time, Ed. Yeah, and could you ask them the size of the carp, whether sure. they were able to uh, contribute, you know, reproduce or not if they're all juveniles i like to know what what we're taking out of there as far as that can okay. they participate in a zoom next to, you know at one of these points can some representative from princeton participate in one of our meetings and give us uh they you know. are going to do a final presentation i've asked for for like updates they were um i, I can ask again they were willing to do a final presentation i can ask about an update I mean, if they zoom in for 15 minutes and then the mm -hmm. trustees can ask some questions, not that tough. Yep, I can ask. Yeah. And, and what, were the, what were the issues with the floating islands that were in Mill Pond? I understand someone didn't want them in front of their house or something. Or is that here? I don't know, trust, Trustee Pell. Did Tom White had four other people 
um, mentioned to me, and I told him to contact Ann, and Tom White said he did speak to Ann about it, about um, the place right in front of, by the elbow there, where they should be moved, moved around so they're not constantly looking at the same thing. It's right in front of Mello's house, Mello's house. Okay. Not turn there, Ed? Yeah, by the turn, yeah, by, on Deerfield Road? Yeah. Yeah, the islands, they're only like maybe 10 feet by six feet. Is there any town property they can be put in front of so people won't have to look at them? Yeah, they're not, and plus they, they don't really look, they're not, you know, you think of an island, they're kind of ugly looking, to be very honest with you. You see a couple of plants, I was very disappointed when I first looked at them. You know, what I thought they were going to be, what I thought they were going to be and what they are, it's like two different things. Maybe it takes okay. time to go in. Hmm. All right. This is our first experience with these things, yeah. right? Yes. They've also been discussed for Lake Agwam. Mentioned mm -hmm. for about Lake Agwam. I think that based on this conversation, I think maybe, you know, ahead of schedule, we should get better determination on whose view site they're going to be in. Well, I think there's specific types of vegetation that could be planted on. Um, yeah. In what size and what size they start with, you know, are you going to start yeah. with some small seeds or what, you know? Yeah, it's basically like it... a like a hydroponic type of thing. Uh, you know, they use different plants for different things. We went over this. We first got educated on this uh, when we had a, a full board meeting <clears> over <throat> at uh, uh, Brookhaven Lab when they found all that radioactivity in the water. And they were they were telling us about uh, the different those, these islands that they put out in uh, Chernobyl. And it seems that uh, sunflowers have an affinity to suck up radiation out of the water and they were growing these sunflower rafts and then harvesting them and then uh, burning them up and actually recycling the radioactivity and mustard, mustard greens soak up lead or arsenic or something. All, all these different plants through their roots take in different nutrients. So the plants that in the floating islands might not look the best, but they're probably suited the best to take up uh, what nutrients they needed to do. Well, that would be a good question for the Princeton Hydrological right. to give us an overview on what they're doing over there so that we could answer questions to the public. Mm -hmm. Not that they just put these islands, these uh, plastic islands out here and they planted what plants and, we, you know, it would be good for us, you mm -hmm. know, to explain to the public. That way they might have a little bit more sympathy towards, you know, the way they look. Right, Bill? Right. right. Yes. Right. I agree with you. That on the, so. I'll ask. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. That's, all I've got. That's it. Then uh, I'll call, make a motion to close the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Stay and uh, just stay to, I'll uh, call you guys up in a couple of minutes on uh, another related uh, legal matter. Just to uh, let you brief you on what's going on. We'll, we'll wait all you, right. We we'll have to call. make a motion to go into executive session. No, I'm not going into executive, executive session. Executive. I'm going to call each member individually on the phone after the meeting. Okay. It's not an executive session. I made a motion to close the public. I second it. Close the meeting and uh, Scott seconded it. Uh, close the meeting. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.